Hi everyone, Kristen here from the Dally Society. Today I'm going to tell you all about how I faced my fears with jean making. Well, you heard it right, I actually finished my first proper pair of jeans. I really have to admit, I thought these jeans were going to be much harder than they were and I had had them in my mind to be some kind of real challenge, but you really do have to try things. Sometimes you've got to challenge yourself and get it. You've really got to get out of your comfort zone sometimes just to see what you're capable of. And I really surprised myself, not only with uh, how well they turned out, but the fit. I really had heard all the stories about these um, particular jeans. These are the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. Now I had heard that they were a fantastic pattern. I had been tossing up whether to make a stretch pair for my first pair of jeans or a non-stretch pair. In my wardrobe, I have got a million pairs of those skinny leg stretch jeans. They don't do a lot for me. I find them to be a bit narrow in the leg or I don't find them to be the most flattering style on me, mainly because a lot of the time they're too short in the leg, which is fine for summer. But for winter, if you want to wear a nice boot, like with a little bit of a heel, I find them just a bit too short. Um, so I always have trouble. I mean, I'm five foot six, so five foot six and a half. So I do sort of border on needing that little bit of a longer length in the leg, um, but not to the extent that I need a tall leg. So it's always been a challenge for me to find a really good pair of jeans. Now, I was a teenager in the 1980s and I either had the really high-waisted baggy pleated front jeans that were like, actually, they're actually coming back in style now. Can you believe that? I've seen them in the stores. I've seen the pleats. I've seen the baggy pants. I never thought I'd see them again, but they're back. High waist is really appealing to me, I've got to say. So when I saw these were a high waist and a really flattering fit with so many different options for the leg widths, I thought they're for me. I've got to let you know too that if you haven't heard the Love to Sew episode all about jean making, get on there and have a look. I will link it below. It's got some fantastic hints and tips. And without that, I probably wouldn't have ventured into it. I know Helen and Carolyn had said how much they loved these Dawn jeans. They were a firm favorite. Now so. they come in a size zero to a size 20. And um, I'll give you a little bit of a look at the line drawings as well. So I went for view B, which was a straight leg. So they've got the high waist straight leg. So if you're not familiar with a higher waist, they do sit quite a bit above your belly button. The button sits directly above mine. I will insert some photos and a bit of video for you guys to have a bit of a look at it. I love them because I feel like they hold me in They without without suffocating me, of course. I want to feel comfortable, but I want to feel put together. And I think the high-waisted really does wonders for giving that nice, flattering, smooth shape. I really don't like it when I have that bit of a muffin top hanging over. And, you know, let's be honest, we're all, we're all at home. We're probably eating a lot more goodies than what we no would normally. So I've probably put a few kilos on, but I don't weigh myself anymore, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> And I find that works for me, so which is probably not great for my cholesterol, but scales only bring me misery, so I just don't even bother with them. They're, they're hidden away. So that's the beauty of sewing. You don't need to worry about it. You can make clothes to fit any body shape. Now, I was a bit of a rebel with this pattern because I'd seen a lot of reviews and I'd seen Adrienne Abel, I think I will link her episode on jean making. I watched her episode and she loved the Dawn jeans as well. She's done a review on quite a few pairs of jeans and she, yeah, she loved the uh, Dawn jeans. I was tossing up between the wide leg and the, and the straight leg, but I thought, no, I'll start off with the straight leg. And being a bit of a rebel that I was, I decided not to make a muslin, which might have been a bit naughty of me because I know everyone does that and I just thought you know what I've got some cheap denim non-stretch denim it's quite a heavy bottom weight denim that have been sitting there for a while and I just thought I will make it up from start to finish and whatever happens happens if they don't fit me I will try and trade them off to somebody that will fit into them but I was really hopeful and looking at the measurements it put me smack bang right in the size 18 um, size range with with all my waist and hip measurements and I actually looked at a pair of jeans that I had in the wardrobe and I sort of, as I was cutting out the shape of the, the jeans, I thought that looks kind of similar to those. They had a little bit of stretch, so I had to allow for that. I'd spoken to Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Um, as we always do, we have a bit of a chat going here and there and she had made a size 16 and she said they fit her like a dream. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to make the 18 and I'm just going to wing it. They were a pleasure to sew. 
I will give you a little bit of a look at the instruction pamphlet. Now, Megan Nielsen, as we all know, she's an Aussie. She's from Western Australia, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure she's from Western Australia. Her instructions would have to be one of the most well-written, precise instructions I'd ever seen as far as visually and just to read um, step by step. Uh, not a problem there at all. So if you're worried about gene making, you're not too sure how you're going to cope, this is the best way to do it. Um, and as I say, this was a pattern. This is a paper pattern that I decided to treat myself with. Normally I do all my PDF, print them out, stick them together. But I had bought some fabric off um, May Designs in Australia here and she had these in stock. So I thought, why not? I'll get a, I'll get a couple of patterns. I'm going to chat a little bit about um, what I've got on the top version here, which is the Jarrah sweater a bit later on. Now, I haven't put rivets on yet. I am planning to put rivets on. I decided that I, that will be eventually what will happen. If you are making a muslin and you're not going to be a rebel like me, you're going to play it safe. Try and use a similar weight fabric. There's no use making a muslin that is not the same weight fabric or the same composition. So if you've got something like a drill, a canvas, so a heavy kind of weight fabric, that would be perfect for making a muslin. Um, I only spent $20, which is Australian $20, on two metres of this denim, which was a bargain. So I really thought if I end up hacking these and ruining them, I've only spent $20, it's not going to end the world. So I just was prepared to take that risk and I'm really happy I did. I just can't believe I made them up as is and they fit me perfectly. I made these in just under two metres of um, non-stretch denim. You may remember on a previous episode that I decided to soften the denim by using co the Coca-Cola method in the wash. Worked a dream. They are really soft for a cheap bottom weight denim with no stretch. They're as soft as can be. So really, really happy. Make sure you have a good denim needle. And if you have a walking foot, I would recommend to use a walking foot because you will need that. I think walking feet are fantastic uh, as an additional um, foot to your sewing machine. I bought mine separately. That didn't come with the machine and I have really really taken it off i love using it some of the thicknesses of the layers of denim together would be quite hard to get under a normal machine foot so if you have a walking foot yeah i'd recommend highly recommend you use that another thing i learned from um, the love to sew episode on denim jeans was to use a normal thread in your bobbin and a top stitch thread or a extra strong uh, gutterman thread which is what i used in the tan color i use that for the top stitch so don't use um, top stitch thread in both that and the bobbin because you'll find apparently people have a lot of trouble with things getting tangled up so be aware of that set your top stitch to a longer length as well to make sure that you have your normal stitching thread and your top stitching thread because you're going to need to swap backwards and forwards through your making process with those two different threads if you have two machines you are going to have a dream with this because you're not going to have to worry about you know changing threads around and at the moment my machine threader is not working so of course the glasses have to come out and it's yeah it's a bit of a pain to be re-threading every five minutes so i really took my time with these i made them over about three days just here and there i wasn't going to rush another thing i found invaluable was to have my mini uh, sleeve ironing board set up with the iron ready to go so it sort of saves you having a big ironing board out because there's going to be a lot of little uh, pockets and you know things to fold over and press that you're going to need to have that now, the thing I changed about these is I did not want to have the button front. I found that uh, I have got the lander pants, the button front. I prefer, personally, this is a personal opinion of mine, I prefer to have a zip fly front. You may love the button front. That's really up to you, whatever works for you. Uh, I just decided the zip front was the way to go for me. So I used a good jean zip. Now, I didn't realize that the uh, hack for the jean zip was not in this envelope, um, that you do have to look up. Megan Nielsen's blog and you will find a whole tutorial on installing a zip fly front so if you're like me and you're looking through the book trying to find the zip fly front you won't find it in here this is all directions for the button front so you're wanting to have a zip fly front don't forget to look on Megan's website and you will find a full tutorial on the ash jeans it's the same principle with them um, with the dawn jeans putting a fly front in yeah it works the same each way and really be careful when she says, you know, not to sew through certain layers, she means it because you might, you know, as I said, a few mistakes I made, I was unpicking with the fly. When you're installing your zip, you've got to really look at those instructions and make sure you understand what she's saying. So yeah, watch her tutorial. Also, there's plenty of um, fly front zipper tutorials on YouTube as well. I think these would be fantastic in a corduroy as well, a non-stretch corduroy, of course, or a canvas. But I am loving the fact that now I've, I've uh, realized what size works for me in these. 
I can go ahead and make all the different colors that I'm wanting. I'd love to make a wide leg pair next as well because I just think that looks fantastic for all seasons. Now the only thing that I changed for the straight size 18 was I took them in a little bit on the sides around the hip region more to like a size 16 area. So I think if I made them again I probably would grade down to a 16 around the butt and around the hips. But you don't know that till you try them on. You really need to try them on before you finish them off. And she does recommend to that when you stitch your front and back legs together, stitch from the insides first and then the outsides last. Then as they're basted on the sides, you try them on, get your fit right, and then you take them back to the machine and you finish off the inner seam. So if you need to take them in a little bit, you can. It's quite easy to do. Now I just used some leftover stash pocket bags that I had um, some linen that worked beautifully. So you can use a nice strong linen or quilted cotton to be great for that as well. So you don't want anything too heavy for your pocket bags. They were a dream to sell up as well. Really great, uh, fantastic instructions. I'd made the lander pants before, so I kind of had a bit of an inkling as to what I was um, gonna be in for with making jeans. But if you've made uh, any kind of pants before, you will find it not as hard as what you have once thought. Um, the only thing I would say that it can be challenging is getting your top stitching nice and even and making sure if you've got one of those little gauges uh, seam gauge measuring devices they are fantastic to have on next to your machine as well you can just say to not do a reverse stitch with your top stitching thread you want to do one straight long line of stitching and then tie it off at the end so you've got to be careful you don't get anything sort of bunched up or knotted up because you will see it it's quite visible when you finished your jeans but yeah i'm really happy with them i really hope that you guys will take the plunge and make yourself a pair of jeans and i think this is a fantastic pattern for a beginner or intermediate sewers next thing i have to show you for today is the mega nielsen jarrah sweater which, which i am absolutely in love with i had seen this pattern circulating around for quite a while now i decided to go for the version with a little front tie um, and i wasn't quite sure if it was going to be too cropped but I wanted it a little bit shorter to wear with these high-waisted jeans it was perfect I was nearly going to lengthen the uh, short and lengthen line I thought no I'll just leave it because it's my first time making it I'm glad I did because it's perfect I made a size 16 these come in a size 0 to size 20 um, you can see here that the the uh, fit of it's quite roomy Now you need to make sure that you've got a 150 width fabric and you'll get it out of at least 1.5 meters. So it's, it's quite a uh, it's quite a well planned out pattern. You need to make your front piece, uh, your bodice piece, all in one. You need to cut it out on the flat so you can get your uh, oh, birds of the You need to cut your front piece out on the flat so you've got your tie there. It's all cut out in one piece. We've got a bunch of galahs going uh, over us at the moment. Pink galahs. They're a bit of a naughty bird if you're familiar with Australian birds. I'll put a uh, I'll put a pick up so I can show you exactly what kind of bird I'm talking about. But we have plenty of them around here, and that was probably there's probably at least a hundred of them just flying over me then. So uh, yeah, what a shame I couldn't show you. But yeah, I'll show you a picture of what they look like. They're noisy and they're naughty birds. So getting back to the Jarrah sweater, the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater, I just think it's a fantastic design. I would love to make the curved hem sweater, which is the lower back to the front. That looks beautiful as well. I've made it in a beautiful, snuggly uh, Euro jersey brushed fabric, which has actually got the beautiful brush fleece on the inside, but that lovely soft cotton feel on the outside. It's not too thick, which I think is fantastic for this pattern because being with a tie, I didn't want it to be too bulky. So Waddle Hill Fabrics in Australia is an online fabric store. They have the biggest range of sweater fabrics that you will find anywhere. They have a lot of print Euro jerseys or brushed fleeces. Um, they have a huge variety. I'll link their store below. I actually bought this and quite a few others and a lovely quilted um, chartreuse color um, brush fleece fabric, which I'm dying to make a cardigan from as well. But you do have to be quick because she does start selling out of things quite fast this time of year and they are really hard to source this kind of um, beautiful quality weight uh, jersey fabric. So yeah, get onto them really fast and you will see the beautiful range they've got uh, of imported Euro jersey fabrics. I love the autumnal print in this, the chestnut color with the, all the mustards. 
Um, this is really my cup of tea, this fabric. It's exactly what I'm looking for, especially with the teal. It'll go with everything in my wardrobe. I would love to see this with a pair of cords in a chestnut color cord in the Dawn Jean uh, style. I just think this is my next little mental image I've got pictured here. Um, yeah, I, I love the colorway in this, this fabric in this top. So yeah, hop on to Waddle Hill Fabrics. I don't know if there's any of this particular fabric left, but there'll be something else just as nice, I'm sure. So I finished this off with a twin stitch needle hem. So that works really well. I think it gives you a lovely professional finish. When you're doing sleeves, don't forget that you always need to measure your length of your sleeve before you finish it off with your cuff because there is nothing worse than finishing off your top completely and realizing you've made the sleeves way too long. So I always measure my length of my sleeve before I attach my cuff. It saved me so many times because I always have a bit of an issue with arms being too long on patterns. So it really helps. So that's all from me today. I will have another episode coming out very shortly. I've got some more patterns of sweaters to show you that have just been released this week. I'm pretty sure you know that what I'm talking about. If not, just keep watching. So a fabric haul is coming very shortly. I'm waiting on a few more deliveries of fabric that's taking just a little bit longer. So if you can just bear with me and wait, I will have a fabric haul coming as soon as I can possibly bring it to you. So. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that does help other sewists in the community find my channel. And also, if you haven't already subscribed and hit the little notification bell this is a great time to do so and then you will never miss out on what I have to offer you thank you also to the wonderful people who have bought me coffees lately I really appreciate it it just helps me bring you more content more often and also for just the amazing uh, feedback I'll get on every episode I just sometimes have trouble keeping up with the amount of people to to get back to but I always make sure I do it's a beautiful thing to read through and see so many supportive comments so thank you thanks for watching today take care and bye for now